Hi everyone, in this video I'm just going to give you a quick guide as to an easy way to change the belts on the Sony CD changer. Now there's quite a few of these different machines, they're the CD PCX series and they do with a 200, a 300 and a 400 and they vary in model numbers like C50, C55 and so on. They're all pretty much the same basic design. Um, usually a lot of people will tell you just to, you have to take all the screws out the back panel and the lids off and remove plastic trims etc but you don't need to do that there's a nice easy way to do it I do quite a lot of these machines so I just thought I'd share it with you so I'll give you an example of what some of the faults are with these machines that you get sometimes they'll work and they'll be fine but they'll be a bit sluggish you may have the carousel works but it won't load discs correctly um, it's all down to belts and just general lack of maintenance on the machines over the years so here's an example on this particular one you turn it on you can hear the motor is spinning because with no load on it. If you open it, you see it's very slowly turning, but nothing really happens when you tell it to change discs. And that's simply because the main drive belt for the carousel has perished on this. It'll be really baggy and stretchy, probably once we open it up. We need to get inside to investigate further. On these, you've got two screws on the top, you've got two screws on either side and then around the back you have three more screws along the case so you need to set the case lid screws off first and then I'll show you different ways and approaches to, to access what's inside So we have two drive belts that we need to worry about on this machine. If we just come down to the left hand rear side, just next to the lens, you should see there's one just here. Get into focus behind this plastic shield. Now when I turn that you can see there's lots and lots of play in that belt. So even though this belt's not actually anything to do with the table, this is the the loading mech for the CD. You can see lots and lots of play in it. Now the actual belt that deals with the loader, we're just getting to focus, is located right down here. If I can just get zoomed in a little bit, there we go, we can just make the camera out. It should be able to just see it, the edge of it, just down there underneath. Where my finger is that's the edge of the drive pulley and that is the belt that's causing the problem resulting in the carousel as you can see the carousel should sound smooth obviously it's slipping in the motor now in terms of how to access these if you follow the conventional rule of thumb you'd be looking at removing this bracket here so first of all we'll just isolate the power usually what you would do is you'd unplug this which is your front panel ribbon cable that's your LED lights for the centre then you'd need to take that screw out there for this arm and then the two screws there to lift this bracket out of the way you then need to remove that screw down there the uh, other screw here to remove this out of the way and this then clips back in when you finish with it to access it but then you'll find you still can't access it very well because you have a very small PCB sat over the top of the gearage so even though it is slightly possible to get in there you'd normally then have to think about taking off the rear PCB which is mounted on brackets um, but there's a much easier way to do this to access both of the pulleys at the same time which I'll show you now now I've found from doing lots of these machines over the years that the simplest way to access your belt without having to touch anything internally is just remove some rear screws. So what we do is remove this one next to the power cable, these three along here, this one just underneath your access plate for the gear and this one and this one for the top of your CD plate. Now the only ones you need to remove are the hovers hold your PCBs in place, your daughter board and so on, you don't need to touch them. Now 
and you'll now see that is all feeling loose but before you go any further and want to take it off just a little couple more things you need to do first of all is unplug your front panel we've already done that in the video earlier because we were showing other ways unplug the LEDs excuse me well I'll lift this up slightly and pull it from the right hand side only and you will now see there's some more cables and you'll also see now you can see the top of the pulleys so we need to unpull the laser now you have a switch here unplug that one and now you should find as it stands you've got more than enough space now without pulling anything else out to access what you need which is this here and this one here so get yourself a pair of tweezers that's your main drive belt and as you can see you can stretch it to about three times its original length so it's absolutely and totally useless and then likewise you can just move the camera slightly Let's take this one out as well. Again, that one's really really spongy. What you find on a lot of Sony decks of this age, whether it be CD player, tape deck, etc., is this happens to pretty much all the, the belts that you find. Um, if it's using flat belts, uh, you'll find that usually they've totally disintegrated and wrapped themselves around. These are probably about on the verge of starting to turn gooey because you know, as I say you can stretch them to like three four times the length and they're not pulling themselves all the way back but they're not breaking which is why the machine was still attempting to operate I always slightly undersize my belts as a replacement as you can see from these they look a lot smaller in terms of the originals the ones are what they call a square type belt and there's nothing, no reason why you can't put these back on. I just prefer to put these on because they're rounded and they're, they're a lot more flexible than the originals. And I've, I've, been, I've been using these type of belts for the best part of uh, 20, 23 years now. And they don't, I've not had any fail. Other people say, oh, you should have used the originals. Well, good luck finding some. A lot of people just say they're originals, but they're not. They're just something they've thrown together. Um, I use these, swear by them, and like I say, I never had a problem. So you just loop it through with your pair of tweezers, hook it onto the back of the pulley, across onto your motor. That's that one on. Likewise, your next one, just pick it up in your pliers ready. Just go and see past the camera. Hook it onto the pulley and across onto the motor spindle. There you go, they're both on. So as you can see, they're both on. And I asked the machine from initially looking that doesn't have any dry grease or anything on it, it's actually all quite nice and fresh. And it did sound quiet. And this machine does sound nice and quiet. I will show you something to check on these as well. Because um, you do have problems with the turntable bearings. So what we need to do now is just plug everything back in. So we'll start with the, the sensor switch at the bottom. Just plug that back in. And then your CD Mac. And for anyone who's wondering, um, oh, you should be doing that without being the SD protector. I am the SD protector. I'm on a, a flat mat. I've also got an ankle bracelet on. So I'm fully SD covered. There's no worry about static or anything. We put that one back in there. And that one into there. What we do now is just put a couple of screws in to hold everything in place and give it a quick test to see. Right, what we should see now, when we power this up, is everything running okay.
There you go, a lovely smooth and quiet. So this machine probably hasn't had a great deal of use to be perfectly honest, judging by the amount of noise coming from the actual tray. And it's very nice and quiet and smooth that. So what we'll do now is just check that the mech is working. It always goes around all the way once because you have a sensor here that checks your table for what's loaded and then there's another sensor underneath that looks through the holes to so it can work out where the disc is. Sometimes they do need alignment which is something I'll touch on in another video. This one all appears to be fine. And again, everything seems to be fine with this. It's playing as it should. One thing I will do is just give the layers a lens a quick clean while we're here. So hopefully, I've got a half decent shot of the lens assembly there for you, and it's easy enough to get in there with a cotton bud and a bit of isoprop. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing from there. Let you just go in there. Give it a quick clean. Just let that dry off, and then hopefully it should be okay. There we go. All plain as it should be. Audio muted for copyright reasons because I'm on YouTube. Just, there we go. So in terms of other things to look out for on these machines, you do have sometimes have issues where you get table errors and it's nothing to do with the actual mechanics or the belts. It's actually down to your uh, sensor is being blocked. Now what you'll find here is you've got a, a sensor here but this one's just to tell the machine what disc is in what slot and then there's another group of sensors underneath on a plate which read if it's full or not again by looking through the vents and all that happens is the vents can get dirty. I'm not sure if you can see through there. I'm trying to show the sensor boards just there. Um, Not sure if you can see through there, but that's your sensor board and it shines up from underneath. And what you would normally do with this, if you need to, is it's the same as, in essence as what I mentioned originally, where you would remove the center bracket. You would also need to remove this cowl here, which is these two screws at the top, and then it just unclips and the door unclips from there, and then this center screw and then you'll be able to lift the entire assembly up and out from these clips at the back but it's a good idea to make a note of where you've put it just put a piece of tape across there to the front I'll just show you you just put yourself a piece of tape across from this panel here to here with a line just so you get your alignment right it does self, pretty much self align itself but you will need to tweak it a little bit if you just decide to pull it out and throw it back in randomly, if you put a line across on a piece of paper as a guide, you'll be fine, you won't need to reset anything. And what you find with the, the sensors is this one, for example, here can get bent, it can be bent back a little bit or bent forward a little bit, and then it won't read anything or it'll only read. So, what you'll find can happen is this sensor, I'm not quite sure if I can show you the angle, but it's, it's on an angle on a bracket which does look like it's bent but it's supposed to be like that now I've seen these machines where people have gone in and thinking oh well, that's got bent and bend it and then it throws it out and it can't read discs properly so you have to put it on a scope to put it back to make sure it's right so don't ever touch any of the screws or anything on here unless you know what you're doing or you have access to an oscilloscope um, I have one in my workshop it's fine and as I say it's pretty easy to do with these test points to access it but you shouldn't normally need to do anything with that and then the other thing 
again these sensors down here they can get blocked so the simplest thing to do is just to give it a little blast of dust so all this is working nice and quiet now this machine's running well now so what we'll do is we'll just power it off and then give it a quick clean just to make sure that the sensors uh, block to anything and just power everything back up again check there's nothing dislodged anywhere Okay, so the last time we're in this slot 300. And again, see so it's playing fine. Well, I won't bother showing you on this machine because it seems a bit of a pointless effort to take it apart just for this. I do have some other machines in stock that need work, so I'll check them. And when if one of the machines has the problem, I'll show you. But on this, as you can see, you've got these. Now these are the bottom of the rollers that the carousel sits on and they only clip in place and as you can see they do wobble a little bit. Over time what you do find to happen um, is they, these have been snapped off or parts are off and they can twist out of place which then means if the machine's moved the roller isn't sat flush anymore and the carousel table won't turn or you get table levers etc. It's nothing to do with the belts and so on. So usually what I do with machines that are as in this good condition because this is actually really good this is how uh, it should be pretty much from the factory to be honest usually i'll strip the carousel off as i mentioned earlier by removing those screws and pulling it out uh, remove all of these they just twist if they've got the tabs on still and come up there's nothing holding them in place other than the physical tabs uh, and i'll just simply glue them but into place so they don't move and then that solves any problems for future life um, it's not something I want to do on this particular machine because this is pretty much as close as you get to the factory to be perfectly honest. But it's something I thought I'd mention and as I say if I've got an, another machine in that's uh, got other problems then I'll show you on that how to align the sensors, um, repair the casters etc. But this one was just simply a case of replacing the belts an easy way. So I hope you found that video useful. As always if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing. And see you again soon. Bye for now.